Good day, my beloved brothers and sisters in Christ. Today, I would like to share with all of you a Eucharistic miracle that might not be widely known, the Eucharistic miracle in Legnica, Poland. Before we begin, I would like to invite all of you to pray this prayer with me, beseeching our Lord Jesus Christ to guide us and give us the grace of knowing the truth. And with trust and confidence, please join me and say, O most loving Jesus, goodness beyond understanding and power infinite, thank you for loving me so much to the point of dying for me, and for giving me so many graces and gifts. O most loving Savior, I implore thee to help me, that I may always love thee above all things and trust in thee at all times. I beseech thee, to deliver me from the many treacherous lies and deceitful words of false prophets and teachers, but most of all, guide me and help me to always be vigilant and careful, so that I may never be deceived. Amen. In the year 2013, on Christmas Day, at St. Hyacinth's Shrine in Legnica, Poland, a consecrated host was accidentally dropped on the floor by a priest. Because of this, the host was placed in a container to dissolve. After two weeks, perhaps expecting that it dissolves completely, those who were to check and look at it first were definitely on for a great and priceless surprise. Not only did the consecrated host did not dissolve completely, red stains were reportedly seen to appear on the consecrated host. With this finding, the once Bishop of Lignitsa, Bishop Stefan Sitchi, had a commission set up, that of a scientific study of the host. Soon after the incident, in the month of February 2014, a fragment of the consecrated host was put on a corporal and underwent tests performed by two independent forensic medicine departments from the Department of Forensic Medicine in Wroclaw and the Department of Forensic Medicine of the Pomeranian Medical University in Szczecin. According to Miracle Hunter, the Medical University in Szczecin concluded that, in the histopathological image, the fragments of the host were found containing the fragmented parts of the cross striated muscle. It is most similar to the heart muscle. Tests also determined the tissue to be of human origin and found that it bore signs of distress. In 2016, approval of the veneration of the host in Lignitsa was granted by the Congregation for the Doctrine of Faith. However, the alleged miracle will continue to be examined by the Church, seeing if this miracle will bear any spiritual fruits. According to Father André Zyombra, who is the parish priest of St. Hyacinth in Lignitsa and was tasked with gathering information about miraculous healings, conversions or issues connected to the pilgrimage movement, said that miraculous conversions are already visible and there are two miraculous healings and a large pilgrimage movement. He gave an example of a man who was hostile to the church for all of his life, even to the point of fighting against it, in an unexplained way, was converted by God. Even so, in such a miraculous way, he did not know what happened to him. Thankfully, he went and received his first Holy Communion after some fifty years, and he changed his life and became an ardent believer. This Eucharistic miracle, hopefully but surely, will increase devotion for those Catholics in Legnica, but for two across the world. I would like to share with all of you this important reminder regarding the Most Holy Eucharist. In the celebration of the Eucharist, the glorified Christ becomes present under the appearances of bread and wine in a way that is unique, a way that is uniquely suited to the Eucharist. In the Church's traditional theological language, in the act of consecration during the Eucharist the substance of the bread and wine is changed by the power of the Holy Spirit into the substance of the body and blood of Jesus Christ. At the same time, 
the accidents or appearances of bread and wine remain. Substance and accident are here used as philosophical terms that have been adapted by great medieval theologians such as St. Thomas Aquinas in their efforts to understand and explain the faith. Such terms are used to convey the fact that what appears to be bread and wine in every way. This change at the level of substance from bread and wine into the body and blood of Christ is called transubstantiation. According to Catholic faith, we can speak of the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist because this transubstantiation has occurred. In everyday language, we call a symbol something that points beyond itself to something else, often to several other realities at once. The transformed bread and wine that are the body and blood of Christ are not merely symbols because they truly are the body and blood of Christ. As St. John Damascene wrote, the bread and wine are not a foreshadowing of the body and blood of Christ, by no means, but the actual deified body of the Lord, because the Lord himself said, This is my body, not a foreshadowing of my body but my body, and not a foreshadowing of my blood but my blood. At the same time, however, it is important to recognize that the body and blood of Christ come to us in the Eucharist in a sacramental form. In other words, Christ is present under the appearances of bread and wine, not in his own proper form. We cannot presume to know all the reasons behind God's actions. God uses, however, the symbolism inherent in the eating of bread and the drinking of wine at the natural level to illuminate the meaning of what is being accomplished in the Eucharist through Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, and sought thy intercession, was left unaided. Inspired with this confidence, I fly unto thee, O Virgin of Virgins, my Mother. To thee I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word Incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in thy mercy hear and answer me, Amen. O blessed Joseph, Father and Guide of Jesus Christ in his childhood and youth, who didst lead him safely in his flight through the desert, and in all the ways of his childhood, be also my companion and guide in this pilgrimage of life, and never permit me to turn aside from the way of God's commandments. Be my refuge in adversity, my support in temptation, my solace in affliction, until at length I arrive at the land of the living, where with thee and Mary, thy most holy spouse, and all the saints, I may rejoice forever in Jesus my Lord. Amen. O angel of God, to whose care I am committed by the supreme clemency, enlighten, defend, direct, and govern me this day, in all my thoughts, words, and actions. Bless us, O Lord, and preserve us from all evil, and bring us to eternal life. Amen. And let us now ask God for pardon for all of the sins that we have committed, having too a firm intention to go to confession as soon as possible if conscious of an unconfessed mortal sin. O oh my God, I am heartily sorry for all my sins, because by them I have offended Thee. I detest them above all things, and I am firmly resolved, by the help of Thy holy grace, which I beseech thee to grant me now and always, rather to die than offend thee any more. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the virtue of his sacred passion, the sign of his holy cross, the purity and humility of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the protection of the angels, and the intercession of all the saints and elect of God, be with me and defend me, now and at the hour of my death. O God, whose property is always to have mercy and to spare, be favorably propitious to the souls of thy servants, and grant them the remission of all their sins, that, being delivered from the bonds of this mortal life, they may be admitted to life everlasting. 
May the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. O oh Jesus, I love you, I thank you and I adore you. Thank you Jesus, thank you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Thank you for watching and may God pour down an abundance of graces and blessings upon all of us. Till next time, stay blessed and keep praying.